Hi, I'm Jay Garstecki. Welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. Please join me in the boat today as we share a story from Jason Miller, a retired U.S. Air Force veteran. Military veterans protect our great nation. Pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson made it their duty to honor our heroes. They want to share soldiers' stories. The perfect place to carry out this mission? A fishing boat. Get ready to launch Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. Just north of the U.S. border on Canada's Eagle Lake. Jason Miller preps for a day on the water. We are set. Thanks for saving this day for me. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous morning. <laughs> Jason served 18 years and four tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Today, however, the mission focuses on water. I think for me, thinking it's such a quiet place and I found myself just actually being able to sit here and enjoy the beauty of it all. You always have to believe as a fisherman that the next task is gonna produce the biggest fish you ever caught. Like you said, you might make a fisherman out of me after this <laughs> Rather, the number of stories. This is really my first true fishing experience, I would say. Jason grew up in Easton, Pennsylvania. I have a big family. My parents divorced when I was three, but my mother remarried an amazing man named Bill. Um, I was very, very lucky to have, have him in my life. My father lived about an hour or so away, so every weekend he would come in, we'd actually go to my grandparents. So my grandmother and grandfather were a really big part of my upbringing as well. Jason had a soft spot for his grandfather, a World War II veteran. There was just a special connection with my pap. I proudly wear his dog tag from. His time in service and the, the, I don't know where, you know, if he's up there, if he sees it, but I hope he knows that how proud I am and how honored I am that I get to wear this every day. So that's his, his dog tag that he wore. And he had it at Pearl Harbor and uh, areas, so that's just, it's just special to me. Jason never had a desire to join the military himself, but a 1998 phone call after college changed everything. Just finishing up my finals, good friend of mine, Dan, called me up. He goes, you want to go in the military? <laughs> just like that, huh? I mean, Jay, it was, I it was like, hell yeah, why not? Let's do it. I like Air Force. That's, that seems kind of why Air Force. Kind of sexy. I don't yeah, know. Plenty. Just I didn't, sounded cool. I, I didn't know anything about it. I was like Air Force. I thought this would be an awesome opportunity to travel the world, get to, get to learn a skill, whatever that trade may be. He completed basic training and ended up assigned as a vehicle operator at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. So you're not even leaving home. <laughs> It's the closest base to my house, so so much for me traveling the world and a, a vehicle operator. So the <laughs> not joke, real sexy, huh? nah, there's nothing sexy about it at all. So the joke was, I'm a bus driver in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I, I got into the military. I just planned on doing four years, you know, serving my country, and uh, I got to meet some amazing guys, amazing people, and that was really. Uh, that was the plan, do four years and I'm getting out. My enlistment was gonna be up in 2002. And then? And then, <laughs> and then everything changed. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. I mean, I knew the world was going to change in that moment, but I didn't realize what that meant for me at the time.
Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, and by Evinrude Outboards. Fishing this good can wipe a guy out. <laughs> exactly why veteran Jason Miller takes a break to dine on the shores of Canada's Eagle Lake. I don't know how you planned it for today because today is gorgeous. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for a better day. Things happen for a reason, man. Darn right they do. In 2001, Jason found himself stationed at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. His role? A U.S. Air Force vehicle operator. My enlistment was going to be up in 2002. And then? And then, <laughs> and then everything changed. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. I mean, I'm sure you remember exactly where you were. Absolutely, I don't think any of us will ever forget yeah, that. Yeah. And that first plane hit, and at that point, nobody really knew what was going on. And then as I was watching, that second plane came in, and uh, yeah, I immediately knew we're under attack. And then within maybe 30 minutes, my phone rang, and it was, you know, base, and they're like, you gotta get back down here. Jason's training instantly kicked in. Got dressed quick, put on my uniform, so I'm flying. Probably going 90 to 100 miles per hour. A state trooper clocked Jason and gave chase. I went right into like mission oriented mode, like I, I gotta get the base. So I put my arm out the window as I'm driving, kind of showing like my uniform. He pulled up alongside of me and just looked at me and just went like this, and got in front of me and took me down the base, basically escorted me. McGuire became the closest secure military base. It just, being there and say, you can't imagine the devastation and we were under attack. Jason's assignment, to drive rescue teams into New York City's devastation. So I spent that first night up there. We were running back and forth every day. And I just felt, I just felt like, I wanna do more, I wanna do more, but what, what can I do? That's it, you know? I don't, I don't make those decisions at all. So you want to do like... Nine days later, Jason got his wish and deployed with special forces to Mazara Island in Oman. And then, on October 7, 2001, the U.S. invaded Afghanistan. Jason was one of the first soldiers in. We're bringing it to him now. We're gonna get him back. And it was such a eerie, but an amazing feeling that night when we were getting all ready to go. The Air Force handed Jason a special assignment, drive the Navy's elite and secret SEAL Team 3 into battle. The mission was already set, so it wasn't a matter of not knowing what was, it was just executing and getting it done. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, SKB Cases, and by St. Croix Rods. I was never really a fisherman. I, I don't even think I can say I am a fisherman, but just to have that moment and just be able to talk more so than the actual catching of the fish. I think it's just, but I also like the rewards of success. So if I'm out here all day and I don't catch a fish, then my, my outlook may be a little different on it. 
If you're a U.S. military veteran living in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, or Florida, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. So you're going through there, through out gill, here, and then, kind of... and then you feed it up, and then you feed it right through the back of it. Yeah, like that, right? Fishing in Canada can certainly be all about the catch. Doing fish here, here we go. But today's trip <laughs> might be more about luring stories of a soldier back to the surface. We was out there firefight and we're coming through and we're driving down this path and there's people cheering, like clapping, supporting us. Jason Miller drove Navy SEALs through Afghanistan's deadliest war zones. There's kids on the, on the ledge, on the rocks and they're standing there and they're chucking rocks at us. And they're like, death to America, die. And they're calling us all sorts of names. And there's this one boy just standing there. It's so eerie to me. He's just standing there like this the whole time, just dead stare as these other guys are throwing rocks at us. That boy and that chilling look. I saw that the hatred in, in a 10 year old boy's eyes still haunt Jason to this day. However, that drive would pale in comparison to May of 2006. I was working with some 10th Mountain Division guys and they were going out on their mission and that day, I didn't, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time because this guy Brian gave me his 10th Mountain Division coin and said, here brother. The military calls the coin Jason received a challenge coin presented to soldiers as a sign of honor and respect. I was like, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And they're going out, they're getting on their Chinook and you know, just go get them type thing. Yeah, um, yeah they got shot down. They, so we lost every, everybody on that Chinook lost their life that day. Gonna be that coin and it's just like, and it was shortly after that moment with that kid in that village, and I'm just, why? The coin of a fallen soldier. Now Jason's prized memento. I'm sending him home, you know? Jason's last tour in Iraq ended in 2008. Literally, we just get done coming off a mission. Within 24 hours, I'm on a plane. I'm flying back home, and it happened to be my niece's birthday, and I'm at her birthday party. And everybody's excited, and I'm excited that I'm home, but all I can think about is going back, because now I just left, I left my brother. I was happy, I was happy I'm with my family, but man. There's something, there's an emptiness inside. An emptiness that overwhelmed and seemed unbearable. I made, I made a conscious decision, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. So I had my note, I sat it there. I put it, I decided I was gonna put a bag over my head and uh, tie the bag and just go out that way. If you'd like to thank one of the veterans featured on our show, go to OperationFishingFreedom.com and we'll make sure they get your message. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Optima Batteries, Temple Bay Lodge, and by PowerPole. on cold Canadian waters. You got one? Yeah, a little one. Iraq and Afghanistan veteran Jason Miller shares a soldier's loneliest story. I don't think it was so much that I wanted to die. 
I just didn't know how to live anymore. This is how bad, it, like for me, if I would have a good day, that was the day I was gonna like do it. That's the day I'm taking myself out because I had such a good day, I don't think I was gonna find that again. A U.S. Veterans Affairs study recently revealed that, on average, 20 U.S. veterans take their own lives each day, 20 soldiers every single day. Like I said, I, when I first returned, I struggled because what, what I, the known world to me now is over there, and this is all unknown to back home. As John F. Kennedy once said, efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. This is my birthday. I thought it'd be poetic to go out the day you came into this world, so I made, I made a conscious decision, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I, put a, I decided I was gonna put a bag over my head and uh, tie the bag and just go out that way. So I had my note, I sat it there, put the bag over my head, tied it, and I remember just, you know, I'm in it. This, is, this process is going on right now. And my phone rings. It was my, my brother. I literally cut the bag. I picked up the phone and uh, he was like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, nothing, what's up? Like, you know, did the switch right away. And he goes, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? I need you to be with my niece and nephew, Jackson and Vanessa. And I'm like, oh yeah, man, absolutely, whatever. So simple, so, but he saved my life that night because he needed me. <laughs> the sounds of war, the images of war, the smell of war, that, that stuff will never leave me, ever. Target! And I don't want it to. I don't, I don't, but man. Sometimes therapy comes in the most surprising and tragic forms. In 2012, the Sandy Hook school shooting took the lives of 20 children and six adults. Jason found reason to help and to heal. I made a cross with everybody's name that lost their life that day, and I drove up to Newtown, and I placed the cross in the memorial they had there in the, in the square. And I was laying each cross down on the ground. Somebody put their hand on my shoulder. I never looked back. And when I put that last cross on, on the ground and I turned, they were gone. I know they were there. It was really, it was a person. It wasn't some <laughs> spirit. But that kind of restored my faith a little bit in humanity. You know, we're suffering together, this tragic loss. We're all suffering together. Jason penned a letter to the President of the United States detailing his struggles as a soldier returning to the civilian world. His inquiry got a response. President Obama, not only did he read my letter, follow up with introducing me and giving my number to the members of Team Rubicon, but he has followed my story since. And this past April of 2016, I actually got invited to the White House to be part of the Wounded Warrior Ride that they participate in every year to kick that off. It is my pleasure to kick off this year's Warrior Ride. Yay. So I know you guys are ready to ride. I just want to close with a quick story. We're joined today by Air Force Technical Sergeant Jason Miller. Jason served four combat tours in Afghanistan and Iraq came home with his body intact, but inside he was struggling with wounds nobody could see. When I went to go shake the president's hand, he hugged me. He didn't shake my hand, he gave me a hug. And political things aside, in that moment he was a human. He was just a father. He was just really compassionate and truly cared. And that made the world a difference to me. I think the real message is, it's as dark as it gets, there's, there's somebody out there. It might not be the President of the United States, it might be your neighbor or a friend, but if you open up and you reach out to somebody, I, I bet you there's gonna be a hand there to pick you up. Exactly why we felt compelled to tell Jason's story. This is a gift from us to you. This is your own customized red, white, and blue. Wow. In appreciation of your service and sacrifice, Jason Miller. Exactly. On there. And your own 
operation. Get out of here. Fishing Freedom jersey with Jason Miller on the front. And Miller ah. on the back and your official brother. And thank you for your service. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> I had went through a lot of struggles, but in uh, 2014, I met an amazing woman. She came into my life. I, I, just, I guess at a time I, I didn't even realize how much I needed it, but we got engaged last year. And then she has a nine-year-old daughter. Life led Jason to unexpected places. Hard to believe that a couple years ago, I wasn't even gonna be here. But love, brought him home. I'm so fortunate and blessed and lucky to have this now. And I'll never take that lightly. If you enjoyed today's show and you'd like to nominate a vet for a future episode, please log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com and click on the nominate a vet button. <laughs>